am looking at the stars. They are so far away. And their light takes so long to reach us. All we ever see of stars are their old portraits. Twenty-five seconds into the future, I will be dead. Summer, 35 years ago, I am reborn on canvas by Basil Hallward's brushstrokes. itself is perfection. My face is free from corruption. I live in an age where men treat art as if it were to be a form of an autobiography. I am young. I'm 18 years old. Ten minutes ago, I met Lord Henry for the first time. minutes later, Harry and I are in Basil's garden. Lilac perfumes my nostrils, and the laburnum blossoms glide gently into the ground. Harry assures me the importance of beauty in one's life, much like the scenery we are in. My eyes open. Portrait is finished. I grow jealous of its perfection, its freshly laid paint, its brighter golden locks. I grow jealous that it is 25 seconds younger than I. I frown on knowing that the portrait will forever be young while I slowly age. The portrait will keep everything I am destined to lose. Three minutes later, after the portrait is finished, I wish for the picture to go old and for I to remain my perfect self. I wish my soul away for the first time. It is winter, 35 years later. I am playing the piano for Harry for the last time. His youth has spoiled. His eyes sag, his skin is yellow, his teeth almost to a complete rot. I am 53 years old, untouched by time's wrinkled hands. It is a summer night and I am in love. Her name is Sybil Vane. She is an actress. One week ago I walk into this exact theatre alone. I sit high above the stage in an empty private box. The play was Romeo and Juliet. Everything was horrible and grotesque until Juliet appeared. One week ago, I fell in love for the first time. I'm looking at myself in a mirror. 
My beauty is perfectly unchanged from thirty-five years ago. For the first time I loathe my beauty. I fling the mirror to the floor. It shatters into a million little pieces. My mind overplays the phrase, to cure the soul by means of the senses, and the senses by means of the soul. I return each night to watch Sybil perform. One night she's Rosalind, another night she's Imogen. She is wells of passion, she's a goddess, she is everything in my life. I walk over the shattered glass on the floor and exit the room. I walk up to the locked door where I have Basil's portrait. I step on the last step and pull out the key. Sybil for the first time. Eyes are gentle, her voice is soft and musical. We stand looking at each other like children. She calls me her Prince Charming. Sybil is the only thing I care about. We are engaged to be married. My bones start to rattle. My mind burns unanswered questions. My hand trembles as I slide the key into the lock. The door shouts open. I close my eyes in fear. The crowd grows restless of Sybil's performance. She is Juliet but not the same Juliet I had once seen her to be. There is no joy as her eyes rest on Romeo. Her gestures become overly artificial. She was absolutely self-contained. Her passion is unreal. She was a complete failure. In the theatre's green room, I am standing over a sobbing Sybil Vane. A bad performance is due to the fact that she has found real love in me. I inspire her to make Romeo jealous. I am her herald to escape the hollow world she has once lived in. I tell her she has ruined my love. Her tears fall on the floor and her makeup smears. She's ugly to me now. The tearful Sybil looks up at me and I feel nothing. I tell her I never want to see her again and walk out the room. This is the last time I see Sybil Vane alive. I open my eyes slowly to the dark playroom. The full moon breaks through the sludged window pane. It gives the cobwebs and dust an eerie feeling. My eyes centre to the covered portrait in the middle of the room. My hand reaches out to unveil its secrets.
I'm sitting in my library thinking about Sybil Vane. There was a coldness in my actions that seemed too natural. I was frightened of how easy it was to be so cruel. Basil's portrait lingers in the corner of the room. I walk closer to the portrait and notice a slight change. look closer to confirm my eye's belief. The expression did seem to have a touch of cruelty on the mouth. Lord Henry comes to visit me the next morning. He gives me the word that Sybil Vane has killed herself last night. undisturbed. No matter how much I try, I cannot feel this emotionally. Addy calls it a romantic tragedy of our age. Dust flies all over the room as I unveil Basil's book. I am terrified. I am afraid. Basil's portrait has become a mirror to my soul. It exposes secrets that my timeless face never tells. I decide to lock the portrait into my childhood playroom. It has been unattended for years. I lock the door, hoping no one ever finds out the secrets of the portrait. The safety of the locked room gives me the freedom to carelessly watch the portrait paint the corruption on my soul. I stared at the wicked thing for more than a minute. The portrait reveals a decayed old man. This old man is how I am. It shows my rotted, chipped teeth, my worn, yellowed skin and fingernails, blood dripping off my leather-like hands, my starched and faded hair. I am ugly. It is my 38th birthday. Basil Holwood is concerned. He has heard rumors of me around London. He assures me that he will stick by me if these rumors are false. He is concerned about my soul. Praised, I offer Basil to see my soul, the soul he helped so long ago to create. We walk in the dark up to the playroom. In. He's the first person to ever step foot in this room. I look at Basil and I can see the beard in his eyes. and his fear becomes complete terror. A feeling overwhelms me and I feel nothing but pure hatred for Basil. I stare at the portrait. My heart drums at the fact that it might have gotten worse. I remember once 
It had brought me nothing but pleasure just watching it grow old. Now it has filled me with terror as it had become my conscience. I would destroy it. I look around the room and see the knife. drips down the table to the floor. A pool forms around his feet. The thing was dead. I take a moment and look out of the window. I look out into the stars. They soothe and calm me for a moment. eyes focus on the portrait. The knife is in my hands. I snatch at it with all my will. I feel fear for the last time. 